Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunswick. And today we have a return guest, um, Beck from episode 221. I actually had to look up um, not when she was on last, but what episode we were even on. I'm like, so this is going to be episode 269. So 221. Yeah, that was that was a minute ago. But we have Dr. Stephanie Wigner joining us today. Now, if you have been paying attention to social media, you might have some guesses as to what we're going to talk about. I don't know. We might be talking about wealth. We're going to talk about how that might be a triggering word. I had an idea that every time we say the word wealth or wealthy in this episode that you guys take a drink. Um, but I think you would be just shoisted within probably the first seven minutes. It's good. Uh, so if you haven't listened to her first episode, I definitely recommend it to listen either before or after this one. Um, Cause it was a different conversation, but like still just hitting a lot of these same notes of like, how can we, like chiropractors, I was talking to a coaching client and I broke it down. I was trying to talk her off the ledge from selling her practice. And I said, I think you are just bored, broke and burnt out. And she laughed and she's like, that's exactly what it is. And I'm like, and I think I just created my next course. Um, but like, that's what it is, is a lot of y'all that are struggling are one of those three, all of those three. And we just got to get your practice a little more fun again, a little more fun. And you know what is fun? Uh, well, you know, it's never fun. That's what I'll say. It's never fun. Uh, you can have the like coolest practice that like is so you, but if it doesn't pay for your groceries, if it doesn't pay for your bills, it that's not fun. That is not fun. So we have Steph on. We're talking about Cairo Wealth Con. If you... I'm not even going to say if you've been living under a rock because we really haven't done a ton, ton of promotion of it yet. Um, but this is an event that Stephanie Wigner and Elise Rigney and I are hosting in Miami in a couple months on October 18th and 19th. We are, of course, going to have the link below in the show notes for you to check that out. Heads up that right now, as the podcast is being released, we are still in early bird where general admission tickets are they're three ninety five. I think they're three. Yes, they're three ninety five, and they're going up to six ninety five um, as of July nineteenth, which is still a fantastic deal. But like, if you're listening before July nineteenth, you should pull the trigger. Um, VIP tickets will sell out. You'll see on there that um, beyond general admission, there is the VIP option. Uh, what we have, VIP is going to get an entire half day of extra content. Um, the Whole seminar is going to start a morning early. There's going to be homework that is sent to you ahead of time. Um, so we can really do the most with that time. And then there's going to be two additional content lunches, which I'm really excited. I don't think I'm allowed to tell you who we have planned yet for that. It's really funny planning an event with like two other bosses where I don't get to like make, I don't get to like make the decisions I have to like, but it's okay. Um, it, it's fine. It's just fun because it's also great. Because these two women, holy cow, they are, want to talk about feeling like having imposter syndrome, being in a planning meeting with Stephanie Wigner and Elise Rigney, it, it will humble you so quickly. I am just in awe, like truly, truly in awe and inspired by those two and what they have done so far. Um, it's just, it's so cool. They're so knowledgeable, like planning events. Like there's so many things that I'm learning. Like there, she was like, Steph is having her person call around for like RBF. And I'm like, wait, what's, what's an RBF charge? And like, and they're talking about like, oh, well, AV will be at least this. And I'm like, wait, these are really expensive. Do you guys know how expensive it is to throw a conference? I didn't. Um, all this time I thought that like, because all I would do, because I'm a dummy, not a dummy, just not experienced, is I would like multiply like, okay, well, this conference has 300 people and they are charging this amount per ticket. They're bringing in ton tons of money. They're making tens of thousands of dollars on this event. Mm -mm. Do you know a lot of the goal is to like break even? Did you guys know that? I don't know. This is just between you and I. Don't tell Steph and Elise I told you that. Um, but like, I was like, oh, so these events are for 
it's a good. So it does put things a lot into perspective of why um, it's so difficult for Cairo conferences to pay speakers and stuff. Like I know that I've shared with you for a long time of like how frustrating it is of like, you can't pay anything. It's like, they're, yeah, they're, they're not setting those ticket prices super high. But anyways, Steph, let's talk about our, our guest today. So Steph is the founder of The Wealthy Practitioner, where she helps other practitioners scale their businesses to seven figures and beyond. She currently owns and operates four clinics on the East Coast with her husband, Kyle, who's a hottie. I added that in. She That's not in her bio. Uh, most of her time is spent being CEO and leading her team to success. In addition to growing businesses, investing, and mentoring, she loves spending as much time as possible with her son and husband. She's a huge advocate for building a legacy without sacrificing those that you're building it for. Um, so Steph is going to be who you're listening to us talk today. I am going to tell you about Elise Rigney as well, uh, just in case somehow you don't know who she is, but she is the third host of this event. Um, absolute powerhouse. She couldn't join us today because she is on like week three of this like European adventure with her three kids and husband. Um, she would have though, that chick works. Like I'll get messages from her in the, over the last few weeks as we're planning. And I'm like, Elise, isn't, I'm looking up the time conversion from now to Italy. Isn't it? 1 30 in the morning what are you doing awake and still working like you have to be up at 6 a.m with your kids tomorrow to like go see some chapel like go to bed she just she just works so anyways dr elise rigney is a owner of multiple impact chiropractic chiropractic locations in Colorado. She's built an all-cash, multi-million dollar annual practices by building teams of highly trained chiropractors. Despite having one of the largest practices in her chiropractic groups, Elise sought business mentorship from outside industry leaders to design her ideal practice and lifestyle. As a wife and mother of three, she strives to give a big life, taking month-long vacations with her family and focusing on CEO responsibilities without patient hours. In 2020, after taking three extended maternity leaves and building a team of doctors, she launched Cairo Intensive to share her behind the scenes strategies and doing it all. She prides herself on sharing tactical, transparent content without gatekeeping the details. And if I can 100% testify to that, that anytime, Elise is one of those speakers on stage that like, she shares it all. Like she does not, it's not like, well, you have to join Cairo Intensive to get that. Like, I have known her and learned from her for so long, and I still walk away with like pages of notes anytime that I hear her talk. So, um, so yeah, so we'll, you'll be very lucky to learn from her at the event as well. So let's see, have, have I filled you in on everything? Um, yeah, you know who we're talking to, you know about the event. I, th I think we could just pray and uh, get to the, to the meat and, meat and potatoes. I was going to say juice and potatoes, but that is... It's meat and potatoes. This juice, is there one with get to the main juice, the main squeeze? Squeeze the potatoes. Anyways, take a breath, center yourself. Check where you're at going into this, uh, into this interview because I want you to really pay attention to phrases or comments that might be triggering. And if you are not familiar with like paying attention to certain things that trigger you, it's going to look like a scrunch of the face, almost like a subtle recoil, a little disgust um, at me or stuff. And that's okay. I am here for it. I will take it. But I want you to be aware that when one of us says something or brings something up, so often when we have a problem with it, it's more of that mirror reflection back on you. Not in a bad way. I love you. But like, why did that trigger you? And I would love, you know, and sometimes, listen, these things are live. So like, it might just be like, eh, I wish you, I get the sentiment, but I wish you'd have phrased it better. Girl, boy, me too. <laughs> like, do you know how many things? I listen back and I'm like, that could have been phrased differently, but like, that's okay. Like, is that perfectionism? Like why the way I phrased it, did that bother you? Like, you know, what are your views? Like a lot of this stuff, when we are talking about money, like there are coaches and books, like there are people making tens and tens of millions of dollars. Um, I can't think of the person right now who's like, you are a badass at making money. 
Jen Cicero. I wanted to say Jen Santos or something, but that's a chiropractor, not her. Jen Cicero is you are a badass at making. She just, it's about money mindset. Like she doesn't give behind the scene techniques. And like, we're going to give you techniques and all of that. But like the first step is that mindset piece. And like, nobody wants to hear that. They're like, no, I have a great mindset around money. You probably don't. If you are blindly saying, I have an amazing mindset around money and you haven't done therapy or work around it, there's a good chance that some of the stuff today is going to be triggering. And so I just, I invite you to join this conversation. We don't come across vulnerable. We don't come across, um, we come across just as very strong, confident women in life, not just in this, but talking about this stuff is super vulnerable. Like it is for me, this fear that I'm going to be judged as a bad person, all of those same mindset things that you deal with, like, and so please listen today with an open heart and open brain. I want you to really lean in and pay attention to what, again, what triggers you, what you're like, hell yes to, and just learn more about yourself and your own path. And I hope that this podcast episode, even if you don't join us in Miami, I hope that this episode can be a step towards providing you more clarity and getting you a better plan um, for whether you're a chiropractor or not for the next 30 years of your life. Uh, in your name we pray. That really wasn't a prayer. That's all right. God was with us. He knows. All right. Without further ado, here is my conversation with Dr. Stephanie Wigner talking about wealth and our upcoming event in Miami, Cairo WealthCon. Enjoy. I was thinking about our last conversation and you surprised me because your last question is apparently a question you ask everybody on your podcast. What does wealth or wealthy? What's wealthy. Wealthy, which is different. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a different question. What does wealthy mean to you? And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> because I think I am, I'm green. I, I would say I'm very green in this Cairo awakening. I think you and I, you've definitely worked with enough Cairos now. Yeah. I, um, I over the last two years have, but like, it wasn't until three years ago that like I started to wake up. Now my Kirby has a finance degree. So he would mm -hmm. be like, okay, well don't throw me in that. He's like, he's like, <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a long time. But like, I just started to have some of those same conversations with him, you know, like using terms like, but that's just an, a liability and we want more assets. And he's like, yes. yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is my wife. You are so hot right now. <laughs> and so like, I really, it was just, uh, it was 20. Yeah. It was 2021 that it was just like, and we'd already paid off our loans and stuff like that. So we were very like debt to income focused, yes. but it was just starting to think about stuff. And so your question caught me off guard because I was like, uh, cause I think it was all about making money. Mm -hmm. Like I think that was kind of my answer of like, I want money. Mm -hmm. But I think that like, now that I've thought about more of like, why, why are we having, you know what I was thinking about yesterday? We should play a drinking game where every time one of us says the word wealth or wealthy, the other person has to take a <laughs> shot. A drink. Like, it's too early and we will get smashed. I was like, okay, I'm trying not to say the word wealth a thousand times in this podcast, but like, you know, like what draws you? Cause you know, we have Cairo wealth con, mm -hmm. you have the wealthy practitioner, mm -hmm. like what, what draws you to that? word. Yeah. I think for me, it just is such an all encompassing word. And, you know, even you saying the word, like the word triggers people. Right. And like, I've always been a person who loves to talk about money. Like I remember even as an associate thinking about money. And so I wasn't associate for very long for multiple reasons, but like, I remember being like, well, how can I increase my capacity, my production in order to make more money? And so I've always been very money driven. And this is something, you know, that I'm sure. Gets and it was about money. You wanted to make more money. I wanted to make more money. Yes. And what was and your plan you were going to do with that money? I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to honestly increase my lifestyle. 
Okay. I didn't want to have to worry about the grocery bill when I went and wanted to buy mm -hmm. organic groceries. It was like, I just want to have enough money. I remember this. Kyle and I talked about this the other day. And he was like, I remember us both working in associateships and we are like doing our meal prepping on Sunday and like living within a budget. And I'm not saying that's bad. I think we need to be very mindful of how we spend mm -hmm. our money. And so I'm not downplaying that, but I don't want to have to ever really operate out of a budget on groceries or travel or experiences. And so for me, we were sitting there and he's like, you know what I want, babe? And I'm like, what? And he's like, my biggest goal in life is to be able to eat out every meal if I want to, and not have to worry about what it costs. Mm -hmm. And I remember like a couple of years ago, there was like a week that we were like so busy every night we were out at dinner. We didn't have jet yet. And I was like, remember the goal that you had? Like, I think we've reached it. And I don't know that it's good for our health that we're eating out this much, but Hey babe, we checked it off now. Like our yes, next goal is a private chef. Okay. Cause uh -huh. we need healthier food. Yeah. Than what we're now eating. we need uh -huh. somebody to like, be like, all right, we're getting prepared for like swimsuit <laughs> season, make yeah. the food, make that happen. Exactly. And so yeah. for us, it was like, it used to be only about the money, but I think it's really important for people to understand that are listening to this. Like it's okay to be driven by money. I think there's a lot of shade around that, but once I had money, I was like, Oh, rich or having more money than I need to spend in my bank account is not wealthy. Right. And I'm trying to build a wealthy life. That's all encompassing. Right. And so I've always just really been like drawn to that word, I guess. And for me, it's like, how can I help more people understand what wealth is truly is and how they can achieve it in their life? Cause your version of wealthy is very different than my version, which is very different than everybody else's version. Right. I think that there is so much, there is, there's so much stigma around wealth as a word of mm -hmm. like, I have started talking about it more on, on social and the posts always do really well. I get ton, like as far as engagement, I get DMs like crazy, but every time I'm like, Oh God, my dad, <laughs> my dad is going to send me a message and be like, mm -hmm. really Lauren? Really? Don't you feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of showboating? Because he mm -hmm. has done that before. He has called me out on um, one. I think he did it publicly because my dad would in the messages of just like, I don't remember what he said, but it was, I was just like, delete, dad, come yeah. on. But I think the where there's shame or it's not shame, there's guilt around mm -hmm. it. And I think what the reason is, is because people don't take it far enough because like they think like, I want to make more money. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, and that's where they feel guilty around wanting to make more money. But a lot of times they don't go further into like, you don't want to make more money. The money is going to do something for you. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that there's not some people out there that the money is going to make them feel more powerful or like feed an ego that might and whether they feel guilt, I don't give a rip about what they do right. with their life. But as I've really gone down, like through therapy and working with a coach is like the money represents security, which yep. is very similar to what you're saying of just like, for me, like freedom is probably my, I thought freedom was my biggest core value until I started doing this work. And I realized that security mm -hmm. actually is because security, which is the wealth, it's being wealthy, is having the security to move through life as I want, which is almost exactly what Kyle was saying of like, mm -hmm. if I want to go to Hawaii for three weeks, I can. If I want to eat out, if I want to renovate my basement to do a home gym, if I want yep. to buy that cold plunge, like I can. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I don't know that like when you kind of get to that root of like, oh, it's security. And then you go to your childhood because, you know, all <laughs> yeah. of our money stuff comes from like childhood, whether you grew up rich, poor, in between. Like, well, you know, what's fascinating to me that I've started to see for a couple of my clients and it's just, it's obvious how childhood plays a role. And so, you know, you and I had similar stories and even, you know, like, Hey, we didn't grow up with money. This is how we've grown. This is how we've transpired over the years. This is all the mindset work we've had it done, but I'm getting a handful of clients where their parents were hustlers mm -hmm. and they weren't around. So oh. they're having mindset limitations with like, I don't really want to work that hard because I know what it costs me. And it's like, okay, but you're still operating out of this or that you're not operating out of both. 
Mm -hmm. And I believe you can work really hard. I work my ass off. I'm sure you do too, but I'm not clocking in your traditional 40, 60 hours a week to make a million dollars. I'm being super intentional in the time slots that I have to make sure they're high revenue producing, high impact, high value. And it's like, that's not me sitting in front of a computer for 12 hours. That's not me adjusting for 12 hours. It is operate, like it is strategizing to get to where I want to be. And so I think for, I think there's such a wide variety of all of us in entrepreneurship who operate by a different set of values and also by a different set of beliefs, but it's like, you have to really look and be like, Hey, am I dampening my potential? Because I think I'm going to have to sacrifice too much to get there as well. And so, yes, I might want more money or more wealth, but to me, it's going to cost me everything to get there. And that's a huge limiting belief as well. Right. So, I mean, your consulting came first and then your podcast. Yes. See, my podcast came first and then consulting. And like, so when you started consulting, did you realize how much need there was for us millennials to fix this shit? And I don't even mean within chiropractic, but yes. But mm -hmm. so like chiropractic is super broken mindset wise, what we learn, what we don't learn. But I, I, I don't want to call it Cairo. Like we'll mm -hmm. talk about Cairo because we are, and we have a conference for Cairo's, but like mm -hmm. multiple other professions have this. Totally. Too. But like, so when you entered consulting, did you know at the time, like, this is the shit that needs to get fixed and I am here to fix it? Um, I just knew there was a lot of broken things out there that I had the potential to fix. What, I don't what kind of I... things did you know were broken before you started? Because I would imagine before you started and what you thought was broken and now that you're in it and what you see is broken are slightly different, I would imagine. Yes, yes. So originally I was like, People just need to do better marketing. They suck at marketing. <laughs> Why can't they get new patients in their door? It is not hard. Like post on social media, go have a conversation. Just get more people to pay you money. It is easy. Do X, Y, and Z. And then the it goes long... into like, oh, now you need communication. You need more communication issues. That's yes. what we're going to need. Like now you need to be a better salesperson. Now you need to like communicate the value of your care. And I do think that of course people need help with that, yeah. but so much more than that. And like the more it, instead of of being an amateur consultant and being more of a pro now it's it's the mindset and the worth and the limiting beliefs and the identity that hold people back the identity that you are worth 100k a month versus the identity of hey i'm just going to stay here at 20k a month is a completely different shift and it's much harder i actually think it's easier to go from 0 to 20k a month than it is to go from 20 to 100k a month and so you think when it's I harder to go from 0 to 20 than 20 to 100 is that what you said or easier no 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 it's easier to go from zero to 20 like you just yeah. put up a okay. shingle you're like i'm here see yes. and you get used to having that stability yep you get used like that's to being it's like, the two hundred fifty thousand dollar. yeah yeah like clinic. we talked about it scale up it's like the traditional clinic does two hundred eighty nine thousand dollars a year it is so it's easier to get to that point and to stay there because you don't really have to work on yourself to, to get mm. to that point, mm -hmm. you just have to put up a shingle. You need a few people to tell each other about you and your offers and your services, but to like really go next level and live up to your potential. There's so much deep work that I think people are scared of doing. So to answer your question, I thought it was all marketing sales. And it's really like, oh, to get people to have the transformation that I want them to, it all has to come down to what their beliefs are. I, I thought when you first said it, you were going to say, that it was easier to go from 20 to 100 because I feel like, and I'm I'm glad you said it the other way because I don't I don't know if I would have agreed, but we've just been force fed that of like, well, you mm -hmm. built it now, you just need to 10 exit, just 10 mm -hmm. exit, just 10 exit, just 10 exit. Mm -hmm. And scaling and duplicating are different. Mm -hmm. You do get to this point where you duplicating doesn't work because yep. what you've done to get to that 250 is is a lot of just doing it and doing it again and doing it again and doing it again. And you can get lucky. Like mm -hmm. if, if you open in your hometown and 12 cousins come to you and they just tell one or two coworkers about you, like you'll be mm -hmm. fine, you know? And so I don't know that it takes a lot of strategy or a lot of reflection to get to that point. It doesn't mean it's easy, right? We know anything right. in entrepreneurship is not easy. Yeah. I just think it's easier to kind of get to those first metrics and those first milestones that we set for ourselves 
versus like next level. And that's just making the money. We mm -hmm. haven't even talked about what to do with the money once you make it, which I think Lauren is why people are really attracted to you and I and Elise in general is because we're like, Hey, here's how we made it. But then here's what we're doing with it too. Like we're all so transparent about that. Like there is no gatekeeping. We are full, fully on board with each other and our shared mission to have mm -hmm. more wealthy chiropractors. And so it's, it's all of these different stages that I think we have went through and there's hard at each stage, but it's like just knowing what to do at each stage is key. Right. There's some, um, quote that I'll butcher because that's what I do. And I don't, didn't pull it up, but there's like this thing out there that like up until a certain amount, um, like, uh, like at a certain amount, money doesn't buy happiness. Mm-hmm. And it used to be like 77,000. I have a feeling with inflation, it's like more than that. And like, how do you feel about the phrase money doesn't buy happiness? I fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. hate it. It's just like, whoever made like that phrase doesn't have money. <laughs> right. Um, somebody, I think it was Gary Vee came back and said, money doesn't buy happiness, but it gives me the means to search for it. It was not Gary Vee. I actually think it was a monk in my husband. Like, so I think <laughs> it was actually a very more spiritual person. I'm like, oh, that was Gary Vee. And my husband was like, no, I told you that from a spiritual book I was reading, but like it gives you the means to search for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's plenty of, we'll use the word rich people out there who are very, very unhappy, but mm -hmm. like, there's just all of these things that our mind, like society tells us, our mind tells us of just like, it's not worth it. No, rich people are assholes. You'll mm -hmm. like, oh no, that's not going to bring you happiness either. And it's just like, I don't know. I'm pretty happy about the fact that I'm flying in lie down seats to Tokyo with my family. Yeah. And also happy. like, I'm pretty happy that I have options in my life mm -hmm. because when, and, and that's the thing, like you said, rich, there's a lot of people that are unhappy that are rich. That's why I don't resonate with the word rich. Rich right. is like stupid to me. Yeah. I don't want to be rich. Rich is chasing I, ego. Yeah. And I don't need to have this money sitting in my bank account to feel worthy, but wealthy to me is so much more than that. I don't know anybody who's truly wealthy that is unhappy or unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. And so the people that are wealthy that I look up to, or that I aspire to be, have their values in alignment. They're prioritizing the right things in life. And that is not only money. Right. Do you, do you find it funny how this conference started? Are we going to admit <laughs> how this conference started? How did it start? It was multiple months ago. I will say we, I do want to clarify that we have had like seven meetings. We have an amazing speaker lineup. We've got itineraries. We are prepared as shit. But just in case an Enneagram three ever asks two other Enneagram threes, if they want to just get on a call to chat, that's how it started. Yeah. I was like, Hey guys, like, do you guys, are you guys free for zoom on Tuesday at like 9am? And you guys were like, yeah, sure. Steph, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> no, how it turned into that. But I think that we all just see, like, just see how much, how much all the things are connected. Mm -hmm. Like it's not about money. It's not about real estate. It's not about investing. It is about that. Like, if you think that serving like thinking about money is a disadvantage to you serving your community. That that makes you less of a chiropractor if you're thinking about pricings. Pricing, we have a problem. If you think that talking about profitability in your clinic is selfish, we have a problem. And we do have a problem with the burnout rate within chiropractic. Yes, like, we were just talking know. about that before we started recording about how many Kairos we know, or we see on these platforms or in these Facebook groups that are like, I'm burnt out. I'm leaving Cairo. I'm burnt out. I'm leaving Cairo. I'm going to do this other job and all these things. And it's so sad to me because we are sitting on the greatest service ever. And it is so fulfilling. And it's like, but it comes when you're not being paid what you're worth, or you're not charging what you're worth. And so I do think that, um, you know, I, I, I 
I kind of get exposed to a bunch of different groups through a def- bunch of different avenues. And I live in my little own abundance bubble, I like to call it. So it's like, I bring my clients into my abundance bubble. They start living in the abundance bubble that I almost forget the actual general pulse of our profession and what their mindset views are. But all mm-hmm. I have to do is go to like a certain conference or hop into a certain Facebook group. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like we have so much work to do. What do you mean? What do you mean you're going to discount your prices because people aren't paying you? What do you mean you can't make your overhead this month? Like, what do you mean that you have no retirement plan and you're five years away from retiring? Like, it's not just our young Kairos, it's our old Kairos who have Mm -hmm. been not old, but in the profession longer that have not really been given good advice or accurate advice or even told how to break in their backs still five days a week. 25 years in. And I think the three of us see the potential there and how we can be part of the change. And also all of us being Enneagram threes um, are like, okay, let's facilitate something that can make that happen. But the need is there. It's so and I weird. think for all three of us to take time out of our super, super busy schedules to put something together like this, like people need to understand how valuable it's going to be. You know, we're going to be talking about, yes, the mindset aspect, because that's huge, but we're also going to be talking about increasing profit in your business. And then we're going to be talking about what to do with that profit. And then, Hey, if you're crazy, like the three of us, and you think that you need to start a new business, we're going to be talking about another income stream as well. Well, and that's because like, Okay, so one of the things that uh, one of the reels that I've done that was really, really well received where I said, like, most of the richest chiropractors, you know, didn't Uh, get rich on chiropractic alone. And like, woo, both sides came out, like both sides came out. And I was like, oop, I touched. And so the thing is, is like, I love chiropractic. And if somebody wanted to be a jerk about something you said, they could be like, yeah, but Steph, you only adjust one day a week. Lauren, you only adjust two days a week. Like if you love it so much. And the thing is, is like what I love about chiropractic is that I go into flow when I do it. It's something with my hands. If I had to work at a computer all the time, like if I just had podcasts and interviews and creating reels and this and that, I would go crazy. Mm -hmm. I love going to a physical building that like I put my love into a community and said like, this is unique. There's nowhere else in the community that you can get this. I love providing jobs for people. I love having tangible people in real life um, that I'm working with and I love adjusting. Mm -hmm. But I don't love adjusting 40 hours a week. I don't, I don't even really like adjusting 20 hours a week um, because it gets in the way if I want to do a three week. And so like, what I would say is like chiropractic the clinic, the chiropractic clinic. So chiropractic is amazing. And having the honor to adjust people is cool. I like that. But that doesn't mean I need to do it. That's the only thing. And that makes me less of a chiropractor. And that's one of the like stuck points that chiros get into, I feel like, of like, that makes me less of a chiropractor if I want to set Pursue up my something clinic, else, yeah, mm-hmm. set up my clinic where it's like, cool, I'm going to pull like a solid 200, 250 from this mm-hmm. thing, but I'm only going to do that 15 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go pull an extra 200, 250 from this thing. And mm-hmm. then I'm going to go do this. Like that doesn't make you a bad chiropractor. It actually probably keeps you from burning out. Totally. Totally. And it allows you to dream for more. And I think a lot of people that listen to both of our podcasts do dream for more and they want more. And that's why they're consuming self-development content, right? Mm -hmm. Is because they're like, what else is out there for me? And I think it's really important to surround yourself with other people who are dreaming for more. If you find yourself doing that, and it could be more within your clinic. It could be like, I know I have more capacity and potential within my clinic. It could be more outside of that, but like the whole world doesn't operate like that. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of people okay with staying at baseline or living just above their means or not doing weeks or months at a time traveling, you know, and that's okay. But I think that just knowing that there's more out there, you do have to surround yourself with other people who think the same thing. Yeah. I think that, and the thing is, is if you, if someone listening is like, listen, I am very happy with bringing in 150 and this and that, I go, hell yeah. Just what's your retirement plan? That's Mm -hmm. the only thing that I'm like, 
you don't need to want to make more money than you're making, but at what are you a doing certain point, and this is like, listen up, Gen Z, love, love you, but I'm just nervous. Like, what is the plan? And I don't mean the plan when you're old and 40. I mean, like, what's the plan when you're like old and 55 mm -hmm. <laughs> or 65? Like, what's the plan there? Um, and that's where so much of the investing part of like, well, what do you do with your profits? What I do with my profits is I freaking invest them because mm -hmm. every investment allows me to have more passive income mm -hmm. and work harder. And I, I view, I don't know, but like I view never really wanting to retire, but I would like my life to, by the time I'm 55, be... 10% active income and 90% passive. Yeah. If I were to ask you, Lauren, do you wish you would have invested in real estate sooner? What would your answer be? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Me too. Like, like I'm like, how did I wait till 2020 to buy my first real estate property? Yes. Like I had money before then. What was I doing? I was going yes. like extravagant around the world. Like why I mean, wasn't I, I smarter with my money? In college, like I literally am just thinking back of like, oh my gosh, I could have, I was making, I was making pretty good money. Not enough that I would, like I would have needed my uncle or parents to co-sign, but like I could have gotten a house. I could have lived in it. I could have rented it out. That would have made the mortgage. I could have had like, why would, why was I doing what I was doing? But like, I totally. didn't have people telling me, me that. Either. And that's the thing is neither of us had people suggesting it. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a lot of trial and error and like falling on your face and lighting money on fire. And then you know, and even us, we're still learning today. I don't think we're the experts on every topic. I can't obviously. wait to learn from some of the speakers. We totally. Have. The speakers Good. are going to need to be able to take notes. <laughs> yeah. The speakers are going to like, we're going to learn just as much from them. That's why we brought them in. But I do think that any person that I've talked to who is trying to build up these things that make them money with, you know, minimal input, it's not like no input, but they're all like, I wish I would have started sooner. I wish that I would have had a plan sooner. I wish that I would have been clear about like, even if it is only $200 a month that I can invest in right now, based on like my income or where the business is at, like, I wish I would have put it somewhere that made the biggest impact for me. Yeah. Surrounding myself by people. Okay. So like, yep. My parents hardest working and Kirby's parents, like Kirby's dad's a farmer. Like I don't know of another profession no. that works so hard and does not make money from it. Um, <laughs> like literally, you think chiropractors are bad, like farming. Oh my God. hundred percent. Um, So like, but now I just think about my children and like, I don't remember where I learned it. Like, I think it was, like I said, it was the podcast first, first came the podcast. And then I started like talking to people, you know, chiropractors who have massive clinics and massive impact and massive wealth, but then like non-chiropractors and I'm just like, oh, wow, you're all kind of saying a lot of the same things, which I've never really been exposed to before. And so now even like the way I view like a vacant lot of like, is that a parking <laughs> ramp? Is that is available? <laughs> Could we put a parking ramp there? Cause that sounds sexy. Like, is that, are they really selling that laundromat? What? Like, oh man, I want to, you know, the, the way that your brain shifts to start to look for opportunities is I think the big is all right. And I would argue, I think that is step one of the awakening of mm -hmm. like, you're exposed to it and you're like, whoa, what? And then you just start to like view your world as different opportunities. Yeah, for sure. And you're just like, um, it, it, I think business in general does. That. I remember like studying different marketing tactics that people do around the holidays, right? Like it kind of starts with that when you start seeing all of these Black Friday sales and you're like, wait, why are they doing that? Like, how are they driving their revenue? What is their sense of urgency or the sense of FOMO? And then you can apply it to your business. You know, I view marketing and sales in other industries and bring it back to chiropractic, I do the same thing with wealth building or gathering some of those assets that'll pay me in the future. I was joking with um, my friend the other day and we were like, okay, sure. Do we have a million dollars sitting in our bank account? No. If that was the, it, 
yeah, but we have access to it. Right. Yep. And it's like, I remember for the longest time, it was just get my savings up, get my savings up, get my savings up. Cause that was the security mm-hmm. and the blanket and that sense of just safety that I needed. But it wasn't until I started studying wealth that I was like, most people are like Elon Musk is severely in debt based on investing in his companies and investing in assets, right? Like if you buy a rental property, unless you're paying cash for it, you have debt on that. And debt's always been viewed as bad. And so it's like, is debt working for you or against you? Those are two different things. And then I started looking at people and I was like, okay, I don't really know that many people. Once your operating expenses are covered and you have a little bit of a nest egg inside of your business, they're not just stacking money in a regular savings account and waiting for a rainy day. And Mm -hmm. growing up, that was what you did because you weren't sure that more was coming. And so for me, when I started studying what other people were doing and reading books and podcasts and learning from people who have done it, I was like, oh yeah, I think I've been doing the wrong thing and I need to learn from people who have done it. Mm -hmm. What were some of the most, like, do you remember any like moments or specific people or like, like what were some of those like biggest aha moments that you had? Well, for me, it was like, once we had our basic needs covered and not not basic, they're much better than other people, places in the world, right? We are very fortunate to live in the US and have the opportunities we do and make the kind of money we do. But once that was covered, we were like, okay, I, once we realized sitting on this money in our savings, wasn't the best option and it wasn't going to get us closer to our goals. We were like, how are we going to get there? And we knew that we wanted to be a part of real estate, but it wasn't like we had info on real estate. We didn't have like a box that we had to check off. We just started buying properties. And again, I'm like, I wish we would have hired a real estate coach or studied for more people who were well invested in real estate. So a lot of the things that we did in real estate was like trial and error, Mm -hmm. but it was at least the first stepping stone to learning, okay, I'm going to take this $30,000 and put it towards a down payment. And yes, the the income on that house might not be as much because it's a long-term low income property, but I get tax advantages and I also am building up equity and somebody else is paying the mortgage. And originally when we first started looking at real estate, it was like, okay, well, we're not getting that excited about, you know, 400 extra dollars a month. Like we, we don't even touch our real estate income because we don't need it luckily. And so, but it's going to be there when we want to capitalize on more opportunities. And so I don't even really think I answered your question because I don't, I don't even remember. I, cause I feel like I fell on my face so much that there wasn't somebody really guiding me in that arena. I do think real estate was like, I don't want to call it a game because I'm sure some people would be offended to that, but like, it's just so, I mean, real estate how come nobody told us about real estate like every (laughs) I feel like every like college class no matter what your degree should just be like okay but here's why like Mm -hmm. you buy a thing I'll break this down to a kindergartner right now in case you're like you buy a thing so you do have to get the money for the down payment for the thing and should you be conscious of like what your interest price or like you know your loan is there yes please do you get someone to pay the mortgage on said thing by renting it from you. You do that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Said thing is completely paid off now. And, or maybe it's longer depending on, you know, whatever. Um, And you can then sell it. You can also Mm -hmm. borrow against it. Like, like it's just the the duplicity of it of like oh well now we're 50 you know we bought this thing for 300,000 and we've paid off 80,000 of it and now all of a sudden hey look you can get a HELOC like now you yes, can and take that. that money back out and do it again mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can do it again and now you have two and so then you are 55 years old you started this game when you were 30 and you have seven properties, you have 12 properties, whatever you have that someone else has basically been paying off for you. Mm -hmm. And now you, they've accrued um, value because real estate does like, I mean, yes, there's the two. Like, the other, the other thing that gets like comes up for me when we're talking about this is even just, so like real estate is one asset, right? Uh, it's like one option I should say, uh, in order to take your profits. But like, I just love our conversation with Elise the other day, when we we're talking about content for Cairo WealthCon, she's like, Oh, well, I'm going to teach them how I was my own bank. 
and how I'm opening these new practices and not even getting money from the bank. And I'm like, nobody knows that. Nobody knows that they could do that or that's also available to them. And then, so when I think of real estate, I'm like, damn, I also wish I would have started investing in whole lives, even like a hundred, $200 a month right when I opened my practice, because mm-hmm. I could have budgeted for it, right? So there's little, there's bigger plays, there's little plays, there's riskier plays, there's well, less Well, and I think it depends plays. on how old you are, is how big and how risky, you know, of like, if you're listening, if you're going to Cairo WealthCon and you're in your 20s, like, I envy you, because you <laughs> don't have to make, you're going to learn that like, you don't have to make a big, risky play, you just need to freaking start. Yes. So start. Now, if you're in your fifties, there's definitely, you have less time for this like game, but there's still things like there's still so many things. Yeah. And I think that just us being able to share those options with other people is like an unlock when we were talking about it, like we wish we would have just had a conference like this or a mentor who could teach on all these different aspects because it would have shortened our runway to getting to where we are now. That's exactly what it is, is we did have conferences. We did have mentors over the last 15 years. Yeah. Like this is like us going like, oh shit. Okay. It took us 15 years to like start grasping these huge things. And you kind of like look back and you just go like, oh, they need this. Yeah. They need this. I want a short, I want it to be only two years for them or three years Mm -hmm. for them. Right. Do you think that there are, are any, and in my mind, they're going to be, um, the 60 year olds that are still on stages within chiropractic. So we won't name names, but like, you can imagine them. Do you think that they're like, what do you think their opinion is that we are doing this conference? And I don't say like, I don't care. Cause like, I'm sure you don't. I do. Okay. <laughs> like I care. What do you think they're saying? You know me so well already. I'm like, I don't even care. Like, okay. <laughs> but like, if you had to, <laughs> Um, I don't know what they feel. And again, like I, I tell you this all the time. I don't even know that many chiropractors. I only know the chiropractors I work with. I don't know a lot of these people on these other stages. Um, but I think they should be proud of the profession. And one, one thing that I love too, which it's like not a conference for women. We have men coming to this, but I do love the idea that we were sick of learning from 70 year old dudes in Cairo, that we were like, let's just do something for that generation that wants more right now. And it actually doesn't matter how old you are or what you're doing, but I think they should be proud that we're doing this for chiropractic um, because they've been doing this for other professions for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, I do think it's a heavy lift. They have. Well, like dentists, they, they're like, Hey, get together. We're, we're going to make a lot of money. Well. I know yeah. so many dentists that own their own buildings. Yeah. They're doing they, great. Yeah. They're, they're crushing it. They're crushing it. Dentists um, really doing it. You know, and, and, and just other professions in general, I think because they have access to other, like a lot of capital, they're like, how can, what can I do with this? You know, mm-hmm. that's just my assumption. I can't say if it's yeah. right or wrong. I would guess that they come from a, and I, I can think of people our age. I mean, maybe like forties that are more this mindset who have been on the stages for a long time that would almost go like, oh, it's rude to talk about money. Like, cause it mm-hmm. was rude to talk about money. It mm-hmm. was rude to like, that is one of the things you teach our, your children. Like you don't ask how much somebody makes. You don't ask how much their car was like, you know? And so like, that is a generation. So like, I look at, you know, that generation, that one ahead of us that is on stage and just talked about pouring your heart into your clinic, Servant's into heart. your patients, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. it, like, that's all you got was like, if you are Cairo enough, your life will be fulfilling and you will be taken care of. And how many of them burnt out their marriages mm-hmm. because they burnt out, didn't see their children. Like there's many that you'll sit and have drinks with. And on stage, they say one thing Mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh man, you're doing it it right. You're doing it right. Like I missed my kid's childhood doing this. And it's like, say this stuff on stage too. So we look and go, well, that doesn't all work. Like that doesn't necessarily Mm -hmm. work. But then I think that there's some um, aspects that still want to hold on to the like, money's not important. Um, And it's all the freedom family, low, tiny practice, mm-hmm. which they're trying to like 
go to a different approach of, and like, I do think these are a lot of females of like, you want to raise your children and practice and mm -hmm. that's fine. You mm -hmm. can work for 10 hours a week out of your home, make $60,000 and be very, very happy. And it's like, okay, but that's also not what I'm talking about. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to pick between those two dichotomies. Mm -hmm. then, yeah, there's a whole other world out there. And also, like, I, I think of a client I have right now, and she um, is preparing for baby two. She wants to have another child. And she came to me and she's like, I'm not going to work more than 15 hours a week. And I was like, great. I love that you have that boundary. It took me a long time to create a boundary around work. So I love that you have it already. Um, but also, don't be mistaken that you can't make significant money and profit, even more than revenue, like profit in that, that a lot of clinics that have 12 team members can't produce, you know, so true. So oh my gosh. Like, there's, there's so we could do a whole other episode just on different types of clinics there are and the pros and cons of all of them. And maybe we should honestly. Um, so people know what options are out there, yeah. but there is so much potential at our fingertips. And I think COVID really kind of awakened this entrepreneurial side of Kairos where they're like, wait, people need our services more than ever. And it's up to me to make it happen. And so I do think that there's a lot of Kairos out there making really good money right now, but they don't have this next like wealth unlock blueprint mm -hmm. they need. Yeah. I also think that, um, there's a, yeah, I've had to like metaphorically shake some people over the phone because of how much they talk poorly about their practice. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a one man show. You're doing like $350,000 of revenue. Your profit margins are this mm -hmm. girl. I think you're, you're doing yeah, I think good. You got it. I yeah. think she's like, yeah, but I only see a hundred people a week. And I'm like, girl, you're doing good. Like yeah. you're doing good. Like you yep. need to like, Give yourself a pat on the back because it is so often. So uh, Kairos are blinded by the wrong numbers, I think. Yeah. Like they're not sure. chasing profit margins. They're not chasing, you know, that type of thing. They're chasing, I'm seeing 500 a week. Am I high volume yet? Am I? And it's mm -hmm. like, charge $5 for adjustment. You'll become high volume in two Literally weeks. no time. Yeah. Like, how's your body feel, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> and how's your bank account? Like, and that, that was the lesson I went through. That was like my ego. Like that was my rude awakening of just like not paying attention to any of that. It was all chasing. Um, am I a worthy enough Cairo? Am I seeing enough people? Is my clinic big enough? Do I have enough associates? Do I have enough clinics? Like, mm. eh, am I, am I a good boy yet? Like, am I a good Fascinating. boy? Yeah. And then I was like, look. And not that, I mean, I could have made very different things and achieved that with a lot higher profit, but like, I, I wasn't, it doesn't yeah, matter. You there. Yeah. It doesn't matter what our OVA was. Mm -hmm. How many people did we see last week? Mm -hmm. And it still fucks with me. Like to this day, Curb and I, I'm two years into that process, like, um, where are not, we are seeing less patients than we were a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And it drives me insane. We have increased our OVA $13. Mm -hmm. And Kirby's like, it's it okay. Yeah. Like we are fine. Look at the bank account. And like, it's okay. And it was just yes. like, you know, See, I, I was the opposite of that. I was like, what do I need to make to live the lifestyle I want? what is the amount of patients I can see to make that happen? And what do I need to charge? Because I never wanted to be high volume. And so Where I was like, from? how did you get that foundation? And I got a shitty, no, I'm not kidding. I think, I you know, mine, but I think it's the projector in me because I don't want to have to like kill myself to make something happen. Uh -huh. So it goes right to like, how can I reverse engineer this and create the goals that I have and like get there quicker with less like quality, quality input, but less quantity input. And so I remember like meeting people and I didn't know people were charging 20, 25, 30, $30 for an adjustment. Mm -hmm. I just assumed everybody was at least around 50. And so when I met that and I was like, Oh my God, you're seeing so much people. That's incredible. Like, I didn't know that was a thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's so funny how we all have our different journeys and like, we all have to go through like similar lessons, you know, like I still realized that in order to get my freedom, I was going to need team. I was the girl that said I was never going to have associates because I was like, I can do it. I don't have, I don't need to see 500 people a week. So if I'm operating for like 150 a week, that was kind of my max. I didn't mm -hmm. personally want to see more than 150 a week. And so 
I didn't even know that that wasn't a normal thing in Cairo. Cause like I said, I don't go to these huge Cairo conferences really. So you, you had no, you have no um, need to impress. No. Other people or just like, just like, is this like, uh, I, I just don't, don't think, need I to impress I... Kairos or like. <laughs> Screw chiropractors. No. Um, I think it was, I, I'm personally not impressed by those numbers. I think. Right. So like, I'm impressed by your, the quality of life you have. I'm impressed by how you manage your time, how you manage your family, how you manage your money. I was never impressed by those like vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. And so like, it just was never something that I personally was optimizing for. And once I started having conversations and I was like, holy shit, I see a third of what you see. And I make triple to four times what you make. Yep. I knew that I would had a good business plan. Right. Right. And so that was the thing. I think just innately, I knew what I was optimizing for. And I didn't even really know what quote the standard or norm was. Right. And I think that being exposed to like people with business degrees mm -hmm. and can like, like outside of chiropractic, uh, probably helps that quite a bit. Totally. Because Cause that's what I always studied was different yeah. businesses. I so wasn't like really studying Cairo. Yeah. So it's like, if you're used to having like a business foundation and then you like are exposed to a chiropractor, who's like, I see 750 a week. And you're like, oh, cool. Like <laughs> what's your overhead? Like what, yeah. what is it? Like what? Well, I have five associates. Ooh, that yeah. sounds expensive. Yeah. What is your OVA? Like what's your cost per acquisition? Like, and they're like, I am hundred percent cash. And you're like, <laughs> wow, sounds even more difficult now. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and I was just like, you're on stage and I want to be on stage. And you are telling me like all the Kairos were like repeating the, like, this is what's important to us. Ma, 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 ma. Mm -hmm. Like peanuts of, you know, just being like, I see this many people. I do this. I do that. And I'm like, okay, that's what it will take to impress you. And then later mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, there's some other questions there. <laughs> I have questions. And also now that I'm like married and have kids, I have non-wealth related questions of like, so wait, you're doing a 7 p.m. health talk five nights a week. You ever put your kids to bed? Right. And like, or like, yeah, just some of those. It's so multifaceted. And that's the thing that, um, Oh goodness, I lost my train of thought, but that's why it is so important though. Oh, I, I know what I was going to say, because you were like, I saw these people on stage and I was emulating what they were telling me was successful. That's why I love that we change the narrative on oh, what yeah. success looks like. You because don't want to see the list of, well, actually everybody would love <laughs> to see the list of people that we were like, absolutely not, not on our stage. <laughs> no, nope. yeah. Yeah. Cause you're not operating. And we have like strict guidelines for that because the three of us have pretty strict guidelines for our life and what we're creating too, you know? And so I do think that all of us know the responsibility that we bear by bringing people into a room. Like I learned it at scale up, like who I put on my stage, people are going to listen to and they value that because I'm endorsing them. And so we've also done this with Cairo WealthCon, right? To be like, hey, if you're going to learn from people, learn from abundant minded people, learn from people who have actually done the thing that they're teaching you. That's what I always, you know, I, I'm probably going to get a little shunned for this, but like I've I love learning from chiropractors who haven't practiced in the last 10 years. And I'm like, but things are so different now post COVID. So yeah, I'm my only practice one day a week, but like, I got a pulse. I know what's happening. I know that your patients are canceling more now. I know that it's harder to reinforce your cancellation policy and you feel bad, like, because mm -hmm. I see it in my family practice as well. Right. So that's one thing for us is we're like, we know people are going to be in the audience and want to emulate and are going to be really receptive. That's why they're there. They're there to learn. And so we've also taken that very seriously because we've been burned by some of the concepts we've been taught. Right. If you could like wave a magic wand and everybody who comes in October leaves with, with like a thing, like a concept like, um, you know, is it motivation? Is it direction? Like what's I, just, I want them to have direction, but I also want them to know, I want them to have clarity on mm -hmm. what like wealth building means to them. Yes. And so it's going to be Good different word. for every person that comes through there. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also want them to know that they can go home and leave that and take things they've learned and make drastic changes in the next 90 days to get them closer to that vision. I love the word clarity. I was hoping to come up with a different word to like add on, but like <laughs> really, you know, I was thinking like, I want them to have a plan, but mm -hmm. well, I want them to know they have options to make their own plan. And so like clarity is like, 
yes. First of all, you got to get your shit. Like you just got to focus because so like at um, my live event for the multi-passionate chiropractor, I talked about how easy it is for chiropractors and honestly, anybody stay at home, dads, stay at home, moms, teachers to just be so locked into the micro of week mm-hmm. to week. Mm-hmm. I, Oh, that sounds like a great conference. I will get, uh, I'm not there yet. That's a bad busy month for me. I, you know, we've mm-hmm. got that soccer tournament. And so I'll get to that if they do it again. Oh, that sounds like an awesome book. I'll get to that, you know, but like right now I'm just so busy. First, I need to clean my kitchen. First, I need to do this. First, I need, oh, I need, as soon as I hire an associate, then I'll be prepared to start thinking like that. But until then, and it's like the micro chasm of like just bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's it's, it's important stuff. Our children's birthday parties and like all of that is important stuff. But like the micro will distract you for decades. Mm-hmm. decades because there's always going to be something mm-hmm. but you know what I thought of when you mentioned your um event I thought about the panel that you had oh. and how cool it was for your attendees to get to ask us different questions and have us answer them through the different lens of all these successful people and we decided to add that into Cairo Wealth Con mm-hmm. also so if you're listening to this like you are going to get so much knowledge if you come from a panel of people. We're going to have different keynote speakers. And I just remember attending your event and really mm-hmm. loving that aspect. Um, and so I'm excited that we're bringing that into the new thing, not to interrupt you with that. Oh but. yeah. No, <laughs> I think that if I think we should tell them also some of the features. So like our, oh, yeah, ma- our specialty idea. mastermind of the first two hours for VIP, like they're going to get me, you, yeah, they get an least. entire VIP ticket gets an entire half day of extra content. Yes. So like general admission, we're kicking it off at like one o'clock on Friday and going all day Saturday, but like VIP starts in the morning on Friday. Like Yeah. And they're going to get three of us at their disposal. That's just one of the perks, you know, and we're going to be, we have some amazing things planned. There's going to be homework for VIPs. So we really want to see where I'm Claire- excited about the two VIP lunches too, which we're not going to say who's there because who knows we could still move things around, but like you're going to have special content on those days. Yeah. Yeah. Those are <laughs> going to be good. Um, but no, I think if you haven't been to like, if you haven't been exposed because of the quality of a panel depends on the quality of the questions. Yep. And I think that our plan around that is solid. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, yeah, I think that if you are somebody who wants, like, doesn't know the questions to ask though, but you just like want to be exposed. Like, I don't know, teach me what I don't know. Like, that's a common thing that I'll do. I'll be like, I I don't know what to ask. So tell me what I don't know. And that's where the panel really becomes helpful is because somebody else asked it like at the live event that I had in April. Yeah. We just, it was like, all right. And then like one thing would prompt a a, uh, answer from some person, but then like Elise would throw her spin on it. And I'd be like, Mm -hmm. well, I'm thinking of it through this. And then like, you can just see not our wheels turning. Like you could just see everybody in the audience's wheels, just like turning, Mm -hmm. just like, Oh, I could apply that to this. And it's like, well, I love in one of our planning meetings, when we, the three of us were chatting about like how much we've personally spent on masterminds to pay people like Alex Wormozy and Jay Abraham, people who are doing like billion dollars of revenue. And we're like, no, you don't understand how much we've actually had to pay to learn the things so that we've learned. Much. <laughs> it gets stupid. Exp- it's not stupid exp- because what you, what you start to it. realize is mm-hmm. like you go like, wait, a 10,000 I was talking to. So I had Ellen Yen on yep. She's the cubicle. Yep. And she was doing a small mastermind retreat um, that I was very interested in going. And uh, we got off and I was like, okay, so how much is it? And I could like tell that she was almost like apologetic. She was just like, so, um, you know, it's not for everyone, but it <laughs> is uh, $10,000. So I was like, oh, that's, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like I was prepared for you to say 25. And she's like, it is so nice to be around. And it's like, well, yeah, because when you start going to these things, you understand that like the application of a single idea, like. I feel like such a cheesy salesperson when I'm talking to someone, but like when I'm onboarding for the MPCP and I'm like, what the, oh my God, like you're worried about 8,000, like you're Mm -hmm. going to get 
$80,000 yep. over the next two years. And if you extrapolate the stuff you could learn from this event, like if you decide one thing, if you make one change that you start doing now, by the time you're 10 years from now, that mm -hmm. could be a million dollar seed. So it's like, yep. oh, you're worried about the flight is $500? Like what? It's hard though, when you get to that stage of like thinking in abundance and then mm -hmm. you're just like, oh, you just realize people are so um, like transactional in their thinking. And you're like, but that's not actually how you become wealthy. Just so you know, if you're worried about the price for this and that, like you're missing the whole point of the value that's provided. Um, and I think that you can just tell people who have done the work and actually invested in themselves think a lot differently than people who are still living in that restrictive mindset. I love that because like, I've never thought of it that way, but it's kind of like that thinking is like, what are you, I need to trust that you're going to change my life. That's worth <laughs> 15. Let's say the whole trip is going to cost you $2,500 because you did mm -hmm. VIP and flights and hotel. I need to trust that you're going to give me $2,500. Whereas like I have invested in myself enough and exposed myself to enough things that I I don't have to trust that you're going to give me that much value. I have to trust that I am going to be inspired to make that. Does that make sense? Yeah, or, or that like, I'm going to take action and implement yes. the things that I actually learn. Yes, and that's the issue is you don't you don't not trust that I'm going to give you that mm -hmm. value. You don't trust that you're going to do anything with it. Yeah, you don't trust Ooh. yourself. Ugh, some people feel called out right now. I've never <laughs> thought of it that way because yeah. I'm just like an action pivot taker. Like that's just never a thing. Mm -hmm. oh, all right. What else do we, what, what else have we not covered? covered? I yeah. think we've covered a lot. I think we've covered a lot. I think we've provided a lot of value. I know we're going to provide more value in October, which early bird ends July. 19th. Oh yeah. That's important to say. <laughs> it ends soon so if you're on the fence grab your ticket before There's the price increases mm -hmm. yeah and then it's going up um I don't I can't even if you're on the fence about general admission versus VIP VIP will sell out there's only a mm -hmm. hundred of them and yep. we are well on our way we are well on our way they will be gone um but that's okay. If you don't feel ready for VIP, like that's fine. But like, just get in the room. You just don't, if you're room. not ready for VIP, just get in the room. What about people who don't think they're ready for, do, would you say there's someone who's not ready for this conference? I think of it like how chiropractors think of, if you have a spine, you should be adjusted. I think if you're a chiropractor, you should be here because it's literally created for chiropractors. We have people DMing us like, Hey, can my spouse come? That's a medical doctor. Can my spouse come? That's a dentist. And it's like, well, yeah, because you're going to learn wealth building tips and it doesn't matter the industry, but we also have a section carved out for actually increasing profit inside of your business. And so this was literally created for you. So I view it the same way. Like if every person on the planet would benefit from being adjusted, every chiropractor on the planet would benefit from being at this event. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, again, I was hoping to kind of add on that, but I'm like, no, you're right. that's, that's a good way to phrase it. Um, Cause I could just see it through, but I do think that that's a limiting belief when it does come kind of just a full circle back to the word wealthy is so many people think, I think they're worried they're going to be embarrassed that mm. like, oh, and I, this is just the lens that I, I go through of like, I don't want to think that I was ready to swim with those people or with those sharks or those big fish. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to look at me and see how much I'm not wealthy and how much mm. I don't deserve to be in that room. And when I realized that that was fictional, mm -hmm. like the way, like the phrase of like, the only people who will judge you are people who haven't done it yet. Like mm -hmm. I, I would never judge someone. I wouldn't judge the student for coming right. because I would be like, holy shit, I am jealous. I didn't because I knew, <laughs> you know, like, and I don't, I'm not just saying that to like get people there. I think the only people who would judge you are the people who stayed home and they're like, oh, you think you're wealthy enough to go to a conference mm. called the Cairo Wealth Con? It's like, you don't get it. 
You don't get it. No, you don't but it's like we it. said earlier, we both wish we would have invested in real estate earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't think there's a thing is too soon for anything, no. at least to learn the information. You might need to wait a month to implement. You might need to wait 12 months to implement, depending on what you have. But you're um, going to walk away with that clarity. You're going to walk away with so much clarity that you're actually going to have a roadmap to what needs to happen next. You know what bothers me? Is that how do we, can we force integration somehow? <laughs> yeah. Be like, here, tell us what you're doing 30 days yep. after the event. <laughs> you do not get to leave this conference room. We're going to have like each of us by a door and be like, mm -mm, tell me what you're <laughs> going to do. Tell me how you're going to integrate this on Monday or in six months or 12 months. It's fine. You don't have to integrate Monday, but I need to know you have clarity in a plan. <laughs> All right. We probably won't lock people in, but All it's right. an option if we need it's it. It's an option. <laughs> and if we see, if we're talking to you at the water cooler and I'm like, I don't think you're going to integrate. I will put you in a headlock and make sure <laughs> that you get your damn value out of this conference. So, all right. Well, any I think we're good. final notes? No, I think we're good. All right. Becoming wealthy. To me, it's guacamole. It's going from guacamole rich to Costco rich. <laughs> I can just... <laughs> guacamole rich is that $250,000 a year clinic. I don't have to worry about if the guacamole is $399. Costco rich is, I spent- You're not much? leaving there under $500. <laughs> I spent $1,300 two times ago and $1,100 three weeks later. And then I got in the car and I told Kirby and I was so worried that he was going to be like, what? And he's like, oh, well, it's food, right? We'll it's eat Costco. it. Costco. Like you get a pass. You're oh like, my God. Costco. I think we might be Costco rich. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the person checking out, has anybody cried? And they're like, sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. She slayers and well, what do you call your people? Well, wealthy practitioners? WPers? I just call them beautiful people. Oh. Yeah. All right, beautiful people and she slayers. I love that. <laughs> we will have necessary links for you below. Keep in mind, July 19th is when the price goes up. Um, I think you should move hell or high water to get there. I really do. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, she slayers and beautiful people. Until next week. Bye. Bye.